Hey everyone! A while back we covered how to make an object stretch between two points, but since Blender had the 3.0 Geometry Node system update, we wanted to update the tutorial as well. Admittedly, it's kind of a niche node setup, but it's helpful for learning how geometry nodes work and easily adaptable to be useful in all sorts of situations. Alright, we won't need the default cube until later, because I've done this a few times I know I have to scale it down real quick, and now hide it. Let's add a plane, this will serve as the object that we build the geometry node system on. In edit mode, select these two vertices and merge them at center with M, then do the same on the other side. Now we've got two vertices, which is what we need for our node setup. Let's head into the Geometry Node Editor and hit New here. For this node setup, we're going to need a couple empties in our scene. They can be placed anywhere, and we'll use them later to determine the location of our endpoints. Back to the Geometry Node, we need a way to separate our two points on our plane so we can perform different actions to each, which we can do with a separate Geometry Node. There's a selection input on this node that we'll use to divide our mesh up into two categories, which in our case will be X location, so we'll also need to add a position node. One vertex has an X position less than zero, the other is greater than zero, so we're going to use that to select a single vertex. Position nodes output X, Y, and Z locations, so we need to add a separate X, Y, Z node to just get the X location. Here's a little quick tip, another way to add nodes is to click an output and drag until you see this little plus sign. Type in whatever you want, in our case math less, then select it. And here's a less than node. Connect the value to selection and set the threshold to zero. Now we're selecting any geometry that has an X position less than zero, which is this vertex. Now we want to move this endpoint to the position of our first empty, so we have quick and easy control over its location. So add a set position node here, shift drag the first empty out of the outliner into the geometry node editor, and connect its location to the position. Right now you can't really tell, but the vertex moved to where the empty is. It's, it's there, I promise. So we can see the change visually, let's go ahead and instance our cube on this point with an instance on points node. Shift drag the cube into the geometry node editor and connect it to the instance input here. Now our cube is instanced on the point which is placed on the first empty. We now want to move our second point to the location of the second empty. I suppose we actually wouldn't need this second point, we could just use the location of the empty, but it's all good, it works the same-ish. Copy this set position node and connect the inverted selection to it, which is just anything that's not selected by this node. Then add a join geometry node at the end so we can connect these two geometry chains back together. And shift drag the second empty into the editor. Connect the location to the position and the second point should move to the empty's location. And we can actually see that it moved, so cool! Now we just need to do some math to get everything to function. In order to make that math easier, let's adjust our object slightly. In edit mode, slide the cube so that the origin lines up with its side. And then select this side and stretch the cube so that it's close to one unit long. You don't actually have to size your object like this, but it does cut out a lot of work. And now we're going to use the locations of the two empties to determine the rotation and scale of our instance object. Add a vector math node set to subtract, connect the two empty locations to it, Add my apparently new favorite node, the illustrious Align Euler to Vector node. Connect the vectors up, and we could leave it as is, but let's add a separate and combine XYZ node so that we can remove the X component from the rotation. I'll show you the difference it makes later once it's all set up. Now it points towards the second empty, so let's get it to stretch to it. Duplicate the Vector Math node and switch it to Distance. Connect up the empty locations again. Connect the output to the scale, and now our object scales to touch the second empty. If you want to stretch your object, rather than scale it, duplicate the combined XYZ node and drop it here. Set any unconnected axes to whatever you want. I'm going to use a value of 1 to get the original scale. And now the object only stretches on the X axis. You can use math nodes to do any sort of scale adjustments that you want, and at this point it's pretty fun to move the empties around. Currently the object always orients itself upwards. If we connect the X rotation up, it's a different story, so it just depends on what you're looking to achieve. And you can modify this in all sorts of ways to make some pretty cool stuff, like ladders, bridges, uh, anything that can stretch, trees, the skies, like literally anything. And you don't have to manually place the endpoints either, you can have the geometry nodes choose random endpoints, really you can do anything you can think of. This is the full node group. In case you're curious, we'll post a blend file on our Patreon so you can take a look. Hopefully this gave you some inspiration for cool things that you can do with geometry nodes. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave us a like and subscribe.
If you would like to help the channel grow, share a video. We also have a Patreon. Thanks again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.